Hey guys. Welcome to uh, Ayimba Conversations. Today we are with uh, Oliver Berger, um, a contemporary artist from Berlin, based in Berlin, and uh, with different backgrounds. And um, Urban Spray once described her as a uh, as a playful mind between realistic abstract interpretation and mystical and metaphysical thoughts. Um, I thought this was a beautiful uh, description of your works and how you how you do your things. Uh, so I didn't want to think of any anything other than that. So um, the first thing that I think that I like to ask everybody who I'm talking to about art is um, why why do you do art? What what's 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 your passion? Where did it start? And why do you decide it to to really do it to go for it? Uh, yes, yeah, so wow, <laughs> this is the question. So why I, I do art is because I've always done it. Mm. Um, since a child, uh, I used to be in my own world, always quite alone. Mm. And my parents always uh, gave me um, color pencils and I used to play with this. So it was kind of my, my uh, yeah, childhood pastime okay. uh, toys, yeah. I would say. And since then, I just continued and never stopped. Yeah. I really never stopped. And uh, till now, yeah. I'm still doing it. And yeah. I feel good. I feel good when I do it. And um, the more I do, the more I discover myself and what I want to share with art. Also. Okay. Okay. So tell us more about your identity. I mean, I, I've, I, through my research, research I noticed that you you have two identities in yourself and uh, two, uh, uh, how do you say, it, countries where you come from. Um, yes. Tell us more how, how it plays in your art. Yes, uh, I'm from uh, Mauritius Island. Yeah. Um, I'm born there. Oh, beautiful. And uh, it's from my mother's side. And my father, he was from uh, Berlin. He was yeah. German. And uh, he uh, met my mother there. And uh, so I was born with my sister. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm in between these two very uh, I would say very different cultures. Mm. Um, Mauritius is very warm. It's very exotic. Yeah. Uh, it's very multicultural. Yeah. And uh, the German side, which is very uh, German, mm. um, uh, with a lot of uh, criteria, and yes, yeah, so I, I dealt. I will. Um, I used to grow up with these two different. Uh, I would say uh, way of living. Since, since small, okay. yes, and um, this is this has a lot of impact, I think, in my art. Um, it's something quite new that I discovered actually how it influenced my art. I yeah. never knew about it, but yeah. now the more I do, I understand. I would say that um, I, I, from the Mauritian side, I take the the colors. Mm. Um, I grew up a lot of in nature, so on the seaside, so I. I very use all this nature color that I used to see in Mauritius mm. with fruits, with vegetables, with trees, the sand, the sea. So this is what I'm taking from my homeland. Yeah. Um, also like spices, mm. like different spices color that I also take so in food. And then uh, I would say the German side in my art would be the very geometrical part of it. Mm. Um, because I grew up also with my father and he used to be very German in the sense of um, I always have to be on time, mm -hmm. uh, everything has to be perfect. Yeah. So um, a bit less organic, I would say. Yeah. So I interpret this with all the geometric shapes and uh, very hard edges yeah. because it, ha it has something very hard in yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Of course so this does. is the combination I'm doing okay. of organic, colorful okay. yeah. and warm and this very geometrical, uh, mathematical yeah, side. Approach. Okay, mm. beautiful. You, you mentioned, um, as I was researching for you, uh, you mentioned that um, your father was a big influence for you and that he taught you a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to ask you, like, what are the, the things that he taught you? You said it was a metaphysical in the universe, science and everything. And um, yeah, tell us tell us more about it. Yes, uh, it's funny because it's, it's my both parents actually are very uh, spiritual, I would say. Yeah. But my father, he was very interested in the universe. Like um, 
yeah, metaphysics, uh, things that happen uh, that sometimes we can't explain. Mm. Um, and he was very curious about it, and I was always with him, uh, and he and he would tell me these stories, uh, very uh, unconventional stories, yeah, yeah. very <laughs> supernatural. Yeah. And I really uh, loved it, because for me as a child, it was like, uh, just wow, okay, um, there is something else in the, in the, in the world. Yeah. And, um, and I really believe in it. Yeah. So um, I think he opened my mind on this side. Mm. And uh, I, now I, with the age, I understand sometimes where it appears in life, the metaphysical yeah. things. Um, yes, so um, a lot about the universe, the planets, and this I, I, I use also in my, in my art. Yeah, like okay. I have, I use like, um, I would say, uh, second thoughts okay. in paintings that maybe people won't see in the first moment. Yeah. But once I explain them why I use, for example, the number three mm. a lot of time, okay. symbolic for Trinity. And okay. um, so then people start to understand. You also mentioned that you have that you you are trying to uh, display your like vulnerabilities your anger or uh, something that you you um that that um, harms you in a way or makes you feel good or makes you feel bad so tell us more about it how is your anger your pain how do you put it on the on the canvas and how do you let it out for yourself mm, yeah this is a very um interesting question because um, yes uh, my art is very doesn't look like um, I would say um, sad or, mm. or angry mm. it looks quite the contrary but I, f I think um, doing this um, I think I'm here to do I think I'm, I'm quite full of um, sadness actually mm. that I when I paint I want to make something beautiful I want to make something when people look at it they feel good like they mm. don't uh, it's not always like um, showing my, my sadness, but um, I think the only moment I really show sadness, I think it's in the eyes I paint. Um, they have a certain way of looking, which is sometimes people refer, yeah, they can feel somehow the sadness, but I combine it with a lot of colorful side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because um, I like this, this contrast actually. Uh, okay. Um, yes. So you, you wouldn't say that your pieces are it, it, it is more for you um, a way to get out of your sadness, get out of your vulnerability and just be happy again and be uh, yes. and see see the beauty in life again instead of being in that state of uh, uh, being small mm -hmm. but also lifting yourself up. Yes. So it's something for you that you feel relief when you, when you paint. Yes, when I paint uh, I feel better because... Um, Maybe it doesn't look like the sad, but the process of doing the art, even mm. if it's something beautiful, mm. just the process is a way of for me to look back at my thoughts. And sometimes a brush stroke is maybe a bit more harder mm. because I feel like, oh, I'm thinking something mm. is annoying me. So I, I put a bit more like, I go a bit harsh on it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel good, so it's a bit more soft. Mm. Um, I would use it like this. Um, but what I feel is um, most of the time when I'm sad and mm. angry, it's ex exactly in this moment where I want to paint. Okay. If in my life everything would be wonderful and joyful, I yeah. think um, I would not <laughs> <laughs> paint so much. I think. Yeah. yeah. So somehow I'm always looking for sadness, but because I find it beautiful. Yeah. There is beauty in it. So. Yeah, I, I, I like that too. I like that mind too, because I think that you cannot appreciate happiness when you don't know uh, uh, the other side, right? Yes. When you when you always have this happiness all the time, it's too much, and sadness yes. all the time, it's also too much. Yes. So I quite understand it. Mm -hmm. I quite understand it. That's that's how I function in a in a way too. Okay. It's beautiful. <laughs> but um, the the next thing that I would like to talk with you about is like loneliness as being an artist. I mean. Somehow, as an artist, you need that space for yourself. You need to be alone. You need to be uh, by yourself. Think of different things. And so, even though when you start producing the art or creating uh, the artworks, you need you need a lot of lonesomeness sometimes. So, how do you deal with that lonesomeness, loneliness? And is it something that you feel comfortable in? Or is it sometimes too much? Or 
how how do you how can you uh, uh, still keep a, a community around yourself or mm. friendship? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm. I always been uh, since a child. I've always been alone. Mm. So I'm very used to be alone and uh, and good with it. Mm. I feel actually very good being alone. Okay. Um, because I think uh, I'm a bit sometimes too sensitive. So mm. when there's too much going on uh, on around me with people or in the street or somewhere, uh, I feel like overwhelmed and mm. I need to go somewhere alone just to, yeah, come back. Because yeah. it's too, it's, I'm like kind of a sponge. It's a lot of information coming, coming. So yeah, so I, I, I really like being alone and it doesn't make me feel bad about it. Mm. But it's true that um, when I start, for example, painting, I'm very focused, so I can stay hours or even mm. days just mm. doing it okay. and being obsessed with this. Yeah. And uh, and then I just cut myself from the world. Mm. And this is sometimes a bit dangerous because, um, yes, you you don't see so much people, you're mm -hmm. just in your mind all the yeah. time. And I try to find a balance to uh, to... to to call back my friends and say, hey, come, let's have yeah. a walk outside, yeah. let's have a coffee. Yeah. I really need this. Yeah, okay. uh, this is very important. Yeah. Yeah, because um, otherwise I would go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> of course, you would yeah. go crazy. All alone by yourself the whole time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not healthy. It's mm -hmm. not healthy, definitely. Yeah, beautiful. But um, I'd like to uh, talk more or go deeper in is um, the, the fact that you really have two identities in yourself. And um, you mentioned in your bio uh, on your website that it is sometimes a burden for you in 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 the area in this area where you live here in Germany in Berlin, and that the people or you live you live in between those two states. Like you you, you said you said like um, I'm simultaneously the existence of both and neither. So you you. Mm. You you are, you are black and you are also not black, yes. but I say in the same times you are nothing. Yes. So um, how does it um, come out in the everyday living? Mm -hmm. And so how do you how do you uh, how do you re receive it, and what do you do against it to to not go crazy? Yes, it's it's hard. I think it's a, it's a I would say a kind of a childhood issue. I'm always carrying with me mm. because. Um, Yes, I'm I'm half half, but I do not look like um, people don't know when they look yeah. at me where I come from, yeah. um, and then and it's fine, it's fine. But um, when I explain, then they are like, okay, um, you're half Mauritian, you're half German, but you don't look Mauritian, but you don't mm. look German, mm. and um, and but but inside I know I have these these two sides, and. Um, Yes, it's a bit uh, delicate because um, in the everyday life, um, when I am in the, I would say, uh, European community, mm. white community, um, people see me as a stranger, mm -hmm. um, okay. not completely, but a, a little bit, I mm. would say. And uh, when I am then in the in the black community, then also they ask themselves, oh, where I come from? Mm. And it's quite funny because... Uh, uh, I feel attached to both. Like it's really, I think when you're um, a Métis, mm -hmm. um, it's always a, a issue to to know to find where to go, mm -hmm. which direction I go. Yeah. And um, and I like, for example, the fact of uh, representing somehow also the Black Afro community. I would say, mm -hmm. because uh, I grew up um, like this, and uh, and uh, and I want to give more power also. Yeah. to the culture yeah. I've been growing with yeah. so yes okay. and uh, the German side for example I have it also very strong but people don't see it so much so mm. it's always like yeah finding the balance in between in between but the people never see you as as, as, as a German in the first place mm. right it's no. it always the foreign in you that, that is seen to first and then than yes. everything else, right? Maybe if I speak German, they, they, they would know, okay, my German is good, so mm. I, I quite, I, maybe I'm German, mm. but they always judge from the outside and they would say, oh, I'm Spanish, I'm Latino, I don't know what, yeah. or Italian. Yeah. 
and then I'm like no or maybe sometimes I look Arabic also so yeah. it's, a, it's a mixture <laughs> and uh, I'm like um, yeah, <laughs> no yeah is, is, is it is it more a burden uh, like does it does it hurt or is it is it more or do you have advantage advantages sometimes where you say okay I can use it for, for something <laughs> that helps me or is it more always like oh no 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 I don't want I want I don't want but what what kind, um, what kind of feeling is it advantage yeah. yes I think it's a, it's a, to be in the between of everything I think it's very good because you I think you're you're quite open to to touch to everything mm. to every people a bit yeah. And uh, and sometimes now I find it funny when when people don't know where I come from yeah. or if I say I'm from Mauritius they're like where is it and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's sometimes hard because you don't know uh, so uh, you you sound because you have you have you have this this French accent mm. and this French tongue um, that I wanted to talk uh, talk with you about what when is the time when you came to 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 Berlin or to even to Europe I don't know where you've been in Europe. But I I also read that you've been living in France for for a while, mm -hmm. and um, tell tell us more about that process. How you came to yes. to Europe, or what was the de decision? Why why your parents said okay, we want to move back to Germany and mm -hmm. not stay in that paradise of Mauritius. Yes, actually, my my parents are still in um, oh, okay. in Mauritius. Yeah. Um, um, my father died oh, so, when yeah. I was uh, yeah. younger. So, yeah. Um, but yes, they when we were born there, we stayed there, uh, they stayed there, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I, I went to school there, I did my um, graduation, I would mm. say in English, as graduation, baccalauréat in French, and mm. in French system, so yeah. that's why I have the French uh, accent, because it's my mother tongue, yeah. and in Mauritius, uh, English is also the official language, yeah. but we all speak French, oh, so okay. that's why the French. But that's complicated. Yes, it's yeah. a lot of languages. <laughs> <laughs> and my father, the German, so I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> too much. God But damn. it's good, it's good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this, Best of three worlds, I yes, guess. Yeah. Yes. But um, I like it. Like, yeah. uh, now in Germany, I speak a lot of English, so it's coming back. But I think I have a lot of French accent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. I, I, I can hear it. Yes. Uh, as we were talking later uh, yeah. today, in the beginning, I, I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a little accent in it. Yes. It's a beautiful. Yeah. So yes, so I moved to Paris after school mm. to study um, something very different from art. It is it was uh, AES. It's economy, law, and mm. sociology. Mm. Because I didn't know what to do uh, with my life. Like yeah. um, I don't know. I didn't know where where to go. And so when I arrived to the university, after two years, I realized uh, I didn't go. To the university at all and i was just at home and painting drawing painting drawing and i was like oh my god i need to do something with which is creative because yeah. the rest annoys me somehow yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um and then one day a girl a friend saw me and uh, i'm i was looking a bit eccentric and i love hats so that's mm. why i paint always hats <laughs> and she was like oh you should maybe um study fashion fashion yeah. design and i was like Oh okay, I have no idea what it is. For mm. me, it was totally new. So I looked for it, and in Paris, it was like very expensive. So uh, my mom, which was in Mauritius, told me go to Berlin. Your sister is there. Uh, you won't be alone, and go study in Berlin. So mm. I came to Berlin after Paris, and uh, I yeah I got accepted in a art in a fashion school here. So I did my my. Bachelor, I would say. No, mm. bachelor. Yeah. Yes, the bachelor. <laughs> License, yeah, it's yeah. the first, first degree. Exactly. Yeah. And um, in fashion design. So I have a fashion design uh, yeah. degree. And even there, when I was uh, studying, I was always at home and always painting. painting. Things okay. that had nothing to do with fashion. Yeah. And I like portraits. I like people's faces. So mm. I was doing this, this. And, and then after the school finished, I was like... Mm, What should I do again? <laughs> and, You're at the uh, same point again. Yes, and then uh, I realized, okay, I just need to do art. Mm. Just to do what I want, yeah. what I like. What you like, yeah. And um, the fashion industry was not so mine. Mm. And um, so, yes, so I worked uh, four years in an art gallery. And uh, on the side, I was doing my art also, mm. and I'm working there. And then I decided, okay, now I want to just... Do art, do art have yeah. all the full time for it. Yeah. Because you need it. Yeah. Yes, so that's why. But you also need to need to make a living. How how 
how do you <laughs> how do you combine these two? I mean, yes, this is this is the <laughs> this tricky, the, part. This the tricky part, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so how do you do it? Uh-huh. Yeah. So for me now to be a full time artist is quite uh, fresh. Mm. It's only since last year that I okay. decided, so it's quite uh, new. And um, the moment I I stop working, um, I got uh, exhibition a lot of, of happening like African Food Festival yeah. and uh, exhibition in London and so. And I saw the painting that helped me f- to survive three four months I would okay. say yeah. and uh, yes and the next step is yes if it's only when uh, people buy that's the that is that that it makes me leave actually yeah because yes. from this I continue I continue, I continue, continue and yeah. if really nothing happens um, I think I would have to find a mm. side job again okay. and then continue to paint okay. all the time I think artist life is like this. Yeah. It's very hard to be just full time because mm. it's never stable. It's yeah. always moving. So. Up and down. So which galleries do you work with? Mm-hmm. Or which galleries do you work with? Or do you have a dealer there who's who's uh, uh, um mm-hmm. selling your pieces for you? Are you selling it yourself or mm. how, how 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 does it work yeah. for you? Last year, I had an exhibition and this two gallery then was selling it for me. Mm. Uh, a woman and. Um, Yes, and uh, when when I don't exhibit, then it would be private. Mm. Then people would say, "Hey, I like your work," mm. and I, and I would do it directly with okay. them. Yeah. But actually, I, I prefer if it's someone that does it for me yeah. because uh, <laughs> it's not my job. Like, yeah. <laughs> I I used to work in an art gallery, but I yeah. I can uh, sell for other artists their work. Yeah. But when it's mine, I think it's it makes me a bit. Uh, Feeling weird, I yeah. would say. It's the <laughs> emotional attachment, right? Yes. You cannot sell your own things. It's like a weird thing to do. Yes. It's like giving your baby away. <laughs> yes, and also to say like, yeah, my stuff is the best. It's a bit like arrogance somehow. Yeah, and and I think this, I, I don't want to use this in my hmm. art. So I prefer to stay humble and wait. Yeah. People come and want to say, I want to buy them. Yes, take it. Yeah, that's, that's an, uh, a very humble uh, approach. Yes, it's that's beautiful. <laughs> Yes, but I have, uh, yeah, I have, uh, there is galleries that approach me to mm. represent me mm. on the online marketing and in France, but yes, uh, I need, I still need to, uh, to give them an answer if mm. I want them to represent me. Okay. So there is things I always thinking, yeah. should I do it, should I not? So back to your, to your works. Um, do you have special, I mean, we are, as, as an artist, you have these like things that you continuously do or you you name your titles uh, after or after specific uh, terms or anything like that so you have something like that where you can what you can grab like you do that every time or how do you get your your titles how do you mm-hmm. work yes the titles uh, this is a new thing i'm doing since i started this series of artwork uh, mm. related to my to mauritius i would say mm. So um, yeah, um, I'm I'm calling all my paintings in Creole. Okay. Yes, because I speak Creole, mm. and um, I wanted to uh, make something completely different, because when you see artworks, they're all in English, English everywhere. People understand; it's easier. Mm. But I want to to somehow celebrate the Creole culture mm. and. Um, and say hey, why not uh, in Creole? And so mm-hmm. all the Creole people would understand. Yeah. But nobody else, <laughs> and then and then I, I just have to explain then yeah. what it means, yeah. and uh, I think it's a it's a good thing to somehow keep some ancient, uh, I would say, yeah, patois in mm. like French, and yeah. Creole. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. Nice. So let's let's um, have a look at, at some of your works, mm-hmm. and um, maybe you can talk us yes. uh, through the works and uh, give us. Um, uh, an idea of uh, why and how you you mm-hmm. you do it yes. and what what's the inspiration about it so okay let's uh, uh, these are called old souls and young hearts um from 2015 you told me yes exactly so tell tell us tell us a bit more about it i mean uh, i find it fast fascinating how you how did it, how you did this so yeah. what is the concept um these artworks i would say they are quite uh, the first um, I think it's the first step in my 
artist career. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the first time I um, exhibited actually. Okay. Yeah, cool. because yeah. I used to to draw a lot, but keep at home. Yes. Yeah. And then there was a period in my life where I was a bit depressed. I was not feeling very well. I, yeah. I was very sad. And I started to do these old people yeah. in this moment where I felt very sad yeah. because I, I felt somehow very old, like not good and, and everything. So um, for me, a way to get this feeling out and let the time pass, I started to say, OK, I wanted to draw old people because, yes, um, it's a symbolic of time. Yeah. Um, and also the process of doing this takes a lot of time. Yeah. So I could really feel this um, time passing, yeah. this sadness yeah. in the faces of old people. Yeah. But this is exactly what I found beautiful. It's um, all this uh, wrinkles, yeah. um, the expression sometimes that looks empty, but, it, but it's not empty. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I, I, I started to draw them. It's a graphite drawing on yeah. paper. And then um, I started with the face. The first idea was to leave just um, to do the face and leave everything white. Okay. And then once I did that, um, I said um, I wanted to pass another message, which appeared in the process. Yeah. I was saying, okay, maybe you get older in, uh, in life. Uh, people don't accept wrinkles yeah. and time. Yeah. But I say. Um, even this, you can still have a young heart. That's yeah. why the title also Old souls, young and man. young heart. Okay. And um, these uh, lines is what I used to do since very small. It's like kind yeah. of doodle. Um, I do it. This is a very meditative way for me to just letting go. Yeah. I do these lines, this geometry, yeah. and it all started like this first. So I try to combine these two contrasts. I would say. Yes. And. Um, but in in the figure so yeah. when you come closer you can see i try to make as if it's like kind of a wrinkles but mm. in a very modern way yeah and i have also like hidden messages in it like this is like from the the mechanic of time okay from a clock okay um here's like a scarabe which represents transformation in yeah. the egyptian um, mythology so that's coming yeah. back to all this metaphysical okay. stuff <laughs> um so transformation from one way well, new life yeah. consciousness so somehow and um yes and then like always like very little hidden, hidden, messages. hidden messages so do you do, you do you do you do this i mean is, is it out of your imagination or do you have a, a a picture that you look after and then you draw after it and that's that's how you yes, do it yes yes i i usually get inspired by a photograph yeah um I wanted to, like many times I walk in the street, I see all the people and mm -hmm. I really want to draw them. Yeah. But to draw like this, you need time and you need um, support. Like support, a, yeah. But I was never confident enough to ask them, can I make a photo <laughs> yeah. of you? <laughs> and uh, I thought like, okay, they think I'm weird. So that's why I take from uh, magazines. And yeah. Everything, so, yes. Oh, okay, beautiful. Yes. But uh, you, you also said that, that it's uh, you, you get that the ideas for, for to finish that work in the process. Mm -hmm. So when you start a work, it's never the, the finished, uh, it's, it's not, uh, uh, or thinking of, of, of an idea, it's never the end result. So when you have the idea right now, mm -hmm. when you start painting, mm -hmm. you say there are a lot of ideas coming through it, right? Yes. And so the end product is almost a, a different one, or mm -hmm. kind of similar. For this one, it, it, it was the fact that it was very different in yeah, the end yeah. from the first idea. Yeah. But now, in my actual state, um, the more I paint, um, for me it's always like this, that um, I function with music. Mm -hmm. um, when I hear music, it breaks out an emotion. Yes. And, and, and this emotion, I see it in my head already like a picture, yeah. like a finished picture. Okay. So uh, what I do is... Um, Yes, it just pops like this in my head. I have these images of people, of uh, attitude of people because of the music that influenced my emotion. Yeah. And so I do like very uh, fast uh, sketches yeah. just to set the idea. Yeah. And then uh, s sometimes I already know, um, actually the original um, sketch of this in the process is to... Yes, of these, these works? 
Or, or this one? Uh, for this, this one, okay. Yes, for, from this one, uh, just to show you. Because these are old, so I don't have yeah, to yeah. sketch anymore. Um, because that would be interesting if you still would have got the sketches from this one in your book and you're still, yes. are, still around and still No, everywhere. from this, no, but yeah. it's like this. Okay. I did the sketch like this yeah. and, and then sometimes I already know Maybe. which colors. Yeah. Yes. So I, I already know in my head which are the colors. Yeah. So I see everything finished. Yeah. And then when I start to do the artwork and I put the colors I've seen in my head, mm. sometimes it starts to change a bit okay. because I need to adjust. Yeah. But uh, the idea is already finished in my head. In your head. Okay. So now in the actual stage of paintings, I they usually look to 80% of what was in my head okay. in the end. Okay, so so, so w w would you say that it's it's more you you are maturing as an artist? Mm. Like you you know what you're trying to do and you are trying to get what what's in your head yes. on the on the canvas. Yes. Not in more like drifting around like oh we start here and then you start to drift uh, to somewhere else. You try mm. to be focused. Yeah, I and, I and now, do, do the one yes. thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, I, nice. I do like this more now. So I, it's really clear in my head yeah. what I want to do. Yes. And I just follow it. Okay. And sometimes, of course, uh, there's something I'm like, oh, okay, I could add something. Yeah. It's just adding. Yeah. But in the end, it's it's what I want. Okay. Yeah, Beautiful. Me. Yes. So what about I mean these these are not that mm -hmm. that much of uh, of colors I mean there are yes. no colors and it's just black and white mm -hmm. so tell tell us wh why do you start um, I mean okay you are you said you you are you were using pencils mm -hmm. so graphite uh, on paper that it's, it's obvious that if you use pencils you cannot use colors to it but um, so tell us why he I mean, you could you could have painted it all mm -hmm. in beautiful bright colors why mm -hmm. didn't you do it why you, you start Mm, yes, because I first I um, when I was younger I used to paint only monochromic. Okay. There was no color. There was no color. No. Okay. I used to paint only in uh, pencil uh. and black, everything black, um, because I think uh, I never really tried with colors before. Mm, I was not looking for this. Yeah. And I think for, for these people, it was also very more fitting to have something monochromic. Yeah. Uh, if I would put colors, it would give a complete Complete different, different uh, feeling, message. Yeah, message yeah, okay. And in this period, I was yeah. really in this dark phase, so yeah. I used to <laughs> keep it like this. <laughs> but yes, the colors actually are quite new to me, I would say. Mm. They are new. always been there, yeah. but I never used them. Used them, okay. Yes. So new, when you say new, what, what time space are we talking about? I mean, is it just... Like you, did you start it yesterday painting ah, the colors or? No, no. Um, yes, I, like a child, I used to use colors, yeah, but really course. to put it in my art, I would say um, only um, six years, five okay. years. Yes. Okay. And before it was only black, white, yeah. uh, no colors. <laughs> because you have you have a beautiful artwork over there, uh, mm. there standing. It's bright, bright colors, beautiful yes. colors. So that the, the this is the, the, the work that I was talking about. I mean you have the boat, I mean you have um the uh, the beach mm -hmm. and a beautiful like turquoise uh, water and um I was asking myself what what is this? Tell us tell us more about this, this work. I mean you just finished it uh, a week ago I guess. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I finished yeah. it uh, yeah, a week ago. Um it it took me a long time because um this was a kind of artwork where I had the idea first, yeah. and in the end, it, it completely shifted. Okay. Yeah. This one okay. is really an example of something that uh, changed in the process. Yeah. And uh, actually, the, the first idea is like, this is the picture uh, of my childhood, actually, because yeah. this is where I grew up yeah. in Mauritius. Yeah. Um, it is a bay where I live. Yeah. And there's always this boat there. Okay. On the beach. <laughs> Where all the fishermen are taking it to, to go out yeah, uh, yeah. to the boats and go then fishing, uh, and yes. And yeah, and here it's really my lifetime. I used to, to, to stay there. Um, yes, uh, and also my parents, they were um, divers. So it was from here that they always went to work, okay. to dive, yeah. I took the boat and go out. Yeah. And this actually here is uh, Le Coin Mir, it's a very famous island, Okay. next to the island, and yeah, um, I, didn't. I put it in one piece, but actually it's cut, yeah. this is at the back, and there's many little islands at the back, it's at very back. beautiful, okay. uh -huh. and uh, we always have this view 
from our house and um and yes um here uh this thing here <laughs> it's an abstract way of showing um what is dark mm. in the sea mm. and um here this square it's where uh ancient pirate boat has sunken oh okay yes it's a boat uh, i grew up with yeah as a child it's a um, very old one um, from the 1916 i think yeah. and uh, a wooden one very beautiful and since a child i was always seeing this boat here in the bay it used to go out a bit and i was always dreaming about so this so is it is it underwater is now it, like, it is under it, now it is underwater yes. so uh, before it was uh, ob ab yes. above okay so before it was above yeah and um and then there was a cyclone that came and yeah. it, uh, it was so old that it has sunken in this oh, okay. place here yeah but uh, the square i did in a very unconscious way i put this here i was like yeah, something is missing here and i put mm. this and after i did that i was looking at uh, the painting and I was like, oh my god, actually this is exactly where the boat has sunken now. Okay. So this was really an uh, unconscious work I did yeah. on this part, yeah. It's in the moment I was trying to find the title of this uh, artwork, mm. then that I thought about this sunken boat, yeah. Okay. Yes, and um, I, fi I find it quite funny actually because I, I didn't really plan this. So have you found an, a name for it, for this piece? So the boat that was sunken is yeah. sunken is called Isla Mauritia. Yeah. So I was thinking of calling this Isla Mauritia. Yeah. Because it's um in Spanish I think. Isla yeah. Mauritia. What But does it, it mean? Uh, mm. Island Mauritius. Oh, oh okay. Like Mauritius Island. Yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe Mauritius Island, but then I I say like no, this is too, too classical. Yeah. So I took um, I said in Creole, uh, uh what did I say? Uh, Mola Plaza, Mola Enfance means uh, my childhood beach, yeah. okay. like where I grew up. Yeah. Yes. And what about what about this um, uh, uh, geometrics uh, mm -hmm. that you have here? Uh, you say you use always use geometrics in your in your painting because it's a, you have a deep connection to it. Yes. So, what meaning does this have? And the second question mm -hmm. is, um, did you paint the background? I mean. There's the, you can see that the colors are different yes. in this space. Yes. So do you paint that first and is it all on the whole screen or just only this space? Yes. Um, that one is inside here is the first layer of okay. painting I yeah. did. Um, But it's covered throughout the whole thing or just uh, just this little space? Yes, it, the, the only first layer of the painting you see is through this line. Here. Okay, okay. And maybe here a bit. Yeah. And um, I started like this, and then I, I, I was looking, yeah, what can I do, and everything, and and then there was like just the first layer, which was mm. very simple. Yeah. And then I don't know why I just said, okay, I put this line here, <laughs> yeah. uh, this kind of window. Yeah. Uh, it was not meant to be a window, but the fact that I did it this way looks like a window. Yeah. Uh, I did this to. For me, it looks like um, um, like. How do you call it? Loop in English. Um, uh, yes. Like okay. something that is bringing the bringing the 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 your your view in, uh, to the, to your to yourself okay. in front. Yes, yes, yes. Like something that is pushing you near nearer to to what you what you are seeing. Yes, and um, I think the purpose I, I did that was to make the painting more interesting also. Yeah. Um, to to break also the rectangular form of mm. the canvas. Yeah. I was like, yeah, if I do this, I, I break completely the perspective of the artwork. Mm. And it was also to bring the attention back here. Okay. Um, to center, I don't know why I did that. It was also maybe in contrast but to the island here, okay. to this, this view yeah. here. Um, For me, actually, when, uh, when I see, saw this, I didn't, I didn't see this one as an, as an island, actually. Mm. I thought it was just the, 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 the clouds, um, oh. like forming the, the, the sculpture but it's like the horizons yes. and uh, in the back you can only see like there are no clouds in the back so that's mm. why it's uh, so so um, bright uh -huh. and I didn't I didn't uh, as you as you were talking I yeah. said okay this is an island oh, okay I understand yes. so she's viewing and she's standing over here uh, yes. the and she's viewing that to the next island she said she have a view to the next island and uh, yeah it's, it's of course beautiful yes <laughs> Yes, and then I put, uh, for example, this part, which is the same as here. I put it a bit more. Everything is not really 
on the same line. Yes. I put this down to also give just slight impression of uh, it's a bit more forward. Okay. Yes. But yes, and uh, and these things here, these lines also. Yeah. I use the same color but in a thicker way. Okay. Um, is to somehow um bring like a layer uh, effect of a very subtle effect of um, the sky going darker. Oh, okay. Mm. But in a very, I would say, modern way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, you're doing this the same, and you also having that landscape form or a huge color fields, like you don't you don't have a lot of details, but mm. you do have a lot of um, 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 yeah, a lot flat. of these fields, flat fields mm. that that you um, fill with colors. So tell us more about it. Why why these bright colors? Why this way? And what do they do with you, or what do you want to express? Yes, um, yeah, I would say like before I used to paint with a lot of details, a lot mm. of stuff. I put in so much information yeah, because... you can see it in the yes, this uh, old souls, the uh, uh, young hearts yes, images there. Exactly, here, but uh, I think they are quite um, still dim, I would say, but there's other works, it's very a lot and too much. Yeah. And then I think uh, now I just want to go in the simple way because uh, it's nice when you paint something just to sometimes say no I don't need all this mm. extra foo foo I would say <laughs> and uh, this foo -foo? Foo -foo. <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> what is foo foo <laughs> in French I would say like ruffles you know like everywhere like um, okay too much details. too much too much detail yes. okay foo -foo. so for me it's a, nice. a kind of therapy also because uh, I use Sometimes I want to, to say so much and talk yeah, too much. Yeah. And it's a therapy for me sometimes to say like, mm, just, yeah, slow, down, back, slow down, stay simple. Yeah, stay so simple. for me, my head okay. is just like, be chill, be simple. Yeah. Don't do too much. Yeah. And give the, the what I'm doing is giving emphasis to the color yeah. and the space actually. Okay. I want to show that sometimes you don't need much and just sometimes just with uh, this area of the sea and this beach here. Mm -hmm. To, to make impact, actually, I would say, just with very simple, mm. give impact with simple, yeah. simplicity. So you're trying to put um, the beach in focus, or let me, let me, let me just uh, rephrase it. You, you, you're using the colors in order to get rid of the details, but also focus the viewer on, on particular things. Mm -hmm. so that they will notice okay this is a beach but an overly dimensionalized in, in a colorful way mm -hmm. and um, you are trying to be as humble or as chilled as relaxed as possible so you don't need to put another thing over here and another thing over there so you have a lot of um, speaking noises but I think the colors really speak quite loud Mm. Uh, in, in my opinion because um, that's not how people would imagine a beach yes, yes. right that's that's it's really loud it's like it's like we want to shout something out okay like I want to go back or that's that's mm -mm. that's where I've, I I get my inspiration of that's um, a nice way to look at, at it yes and it's also oh, exactly you you exactly found the right yeah. uh, way to explain it actually and um yeah, it's, it's, it's through the color, the simplicity, and something. It's not real, but the, the, the mm -hmm. brain gets it. Yeah, it's the brain rich. gets it, yeah. And this is what I want to do. It's uh, some, somehow um, trigger with the brain and say, hey, it's an abstract way, I think, mm -hmm. but still quite real, but not completely. Mm -hmm. and, and in combination with the, a bit more realistic, but this is also not real. Like, the sky doesn't really exist under these colors, I would say. No. Um, you have the pink yeah, sky okay, yeah, and yeah, everything, but everything. not like this. This one I just did randomly, and and yeah, and I like this combination of uh, a bit more soft, organic, realistic, mm. like here this part of the board, and then with this very geometrical uh, sharp yeah. edges yeah. to to find a to play with it actually. It's a, it's a game. I yeah. Think. Yes. Nice. Yes, but this one I'm I'm quite actually happy of the end result. Sometimes yeah. I'm very um, un unsatisfied. unsatisfied. But it's always like that sometimes, yes. right? Yes, because you, you I can see oh I can do something here more. I can yeah. 
correct you. I don't are you, know. Are you ever happy with one of your works? I mean, mm. I mean, it, it's the it's the fact that I mean a lot of people see the mistakes in what they do, mm. the, the mistakes in 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 quotes, um. But sometimes there are no mistakes, and other people find your mistake maybe encouraging, encouraging or very good or. Mm -hmm inspiring mm. you know that's what i witnessed sometimes i mean i paint too and sometimes when i do works and um, i show it to people and even though sometimes i really hate them i say it's totally crap mm -hmm. they say no it's not <laughs> and they're not even my friends i mean they're foreign foreign people so i think there's always inspiration in everything that you do whether it's perfect or not perfect so mm. the thing is to do it and to find a reason for you to do for yourself to do it and yes. to, to maybe find a reason for other people to be inspired yes. by it, I guess. But that's yes. my weird, weird yes. brain. No, 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 but it's, uh, it's actually like this also. Like, yeah. um, there's things uh, I see that maybe you don't, yeah. that people don't see. Yeah. And I think when you do art, you know exactly what you want. Yeah. And, and when it's not perfect, you, you go crazy about yeah. it. But uh, people were like, oh my God, it's nice. And you're just like, mm, okay. <laughs> But uh, in the end, uh, I try to not to be too um, too hard on myself. Okay. I am quite hard because I want perfection, but yeah. sometimes I'm like, okay, it's fine. Relax, it's not yeah. straight enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all, all the colors uh, we move away yeah. from sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So beautiful. So this is one uh, uh, present or current uh, um, work that you do let's um, go to, mm -hmm. to the one on, yes. the, on the wall so this that's the that's that's the cur current um uh, uh, uh piece that you are working on and yeah. uh, you can see that you're not quite finished or but you're also quite um uh, on your way mm -hmm. so tell us more about these ones uh yes these ones um uh, as usual i like to pay uh, to paint a woman yeah uh, because uh yeah, because there's not many ma female artists in the world, and yeah. somehow I relate to this so always like feminine figures, but not always. Maybe someday I would do a man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these two are the symbolic of the Trinity. Okay. Like once I said before, like um, I've, I always believe in the absolute, which is free, the number three, like um, past, future, present, uh, hot, cold, mm. and middle warm. I would say. Yeah. So it's always. Um, in relation to one ad, um, another, and here it's um, the Trinity also. Yeah. But first, when we look like this, we think of duality of two. Yeah. Uh, because there's these two heads. Um, so this one um, on the left is um, looking into the past, and this one is looking into the future, and the circle at the back, which actually represent. The absolute, the absolute, okay. The free together. Yeah. It's not a head, but yeah. it's it's the combination of okay. these two elements, and uh, yes. And then I, like you see, I always like to put hats, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I really love hats. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, when I wear a hat, I feel good. Yeah. It's a kind. It's um, and I like also wearing eccentric or weird shaped uh, hats. For me, it's like um, it's not like a costume, but it's like like a home. Okay. Yeah, it's like uh, your person, and yeah. when you, for me, when you wear a hat, it uh, it's like a yeah, like a a roof, you know, yeah. on your head, yeah. and it, yeah, and and I you feel, feel good. So yeah. it's like a home. Yeah. So always putting these hats where someone can hide. Yeah. You can be either mysterious with a hat, yeah. or you can do completely. Uh, the opposite and uh, look very um, um, imposant because if it's big then people will look at you first yeah. so you can't be hiding yeah, yeah of course so it's like a contrast yeah. between these two which I like <laughs> <laughs> and yes and um, and we don't see enough uh, women with hat for mm. people so okay. this encourage you to put hat <laughs> yeah <laughs> put more hats yes. off yes beautiful so you say it's it's um, the concept is about the trinity mm -hmm. and um I find it I find it very interesting because um I also have an an idea of uh, or I had the similarity with the uh, with 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 religion mm -hmm. religion of course and, yes. and there's also always a, a mystical and I find it um very interesting that you put the third um 
thing mm -hmm. is almost invisible. Yes. It's, it's, you have to know it before you, mm. you can see it. Because you see the two figures and you always say, okay, it's, mm. these are two per personalities on, yes. a, on a picture. Yes. There, are, um, uh, there are a lot of colors uh, uh, around it. But the, the Trinity part, uh, so the third part is always invisible and mm. it's something like mystical mm -hmm. and um, you, you won't... You won't uh, you won't see it uh, in the first place. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's very interesting the way you you express your uh, the, 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 the form of Trinity, mm -hmm. of being mm -hmm. being the, the three in, in the whole. Yes, and then also like um, here this part here, yeah. uh, it's cutting somehow, it's coming from uh, up. Up. Uh, so up, I up. also believe like uh, a lot of in the universe, I would yeah. say. And um, and this is uh, for me the also like in a very abstract and geometr geometrical way to express the I would say this uh, thing coming uh, from the above. Okay. So this is uniting the whole. So like a heavenly uh, <laughs> blessing or anything yes, like that. Yes, kind of energy. Are you are you religious in 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 the classical way like? Do you go to church and pre? Uh, you pray every day. Mm, I don't go to church. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a baptized uh, Catholic. Yeah. But I never been really. No, I'm not doing this. I'm not going okay. to church. But I believe in something bigger. Yeah. I don't like to put names to it because I think it's so big that you can't actually put a name. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I would call it somehow energy. Okay. And this energy is uh, is there, yeah. and I respect this and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's very spiritual. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, but it's not religion in a classical way. I would okay. say, no, no yeah. spiritual. Yes. But you you believe in something bigger than mm -hmm. our existence, or anything bigger than what we can see or sometimes hear. Yes. Okay. It's the invisible yeah. part. Uh, yes, it's the magical one. <laughs> yeah. So so are these people um, special people? I mean, are these their friends or anything like that or? Are you just, it's just random, like you, you googled it and you found them? Or are these friends? Do you know friend? her? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm asking no. you. I, yes. know. <laughs> I can see everything, everybody. Yes. Um, yeah, it's someone I know. Yeah. It's someone I met uh, last year and she helped me. Um, she believed in my art. Okay. I would say it's the first person that really showed me a lot of interest. Yeah. And she. Um, she showed my work also and was supporting me a lot. I will not give names, but yeah, uh, okay. And um, when the first time I saw her because she wanted to show my works and everything, I was like, oh my gosh, she's beautiful. <laughs> uh, and I said, can I can I paint you one day? And she yeah. was like, yes, yeah, my of do course. it. So I'm doing it, but I think she doesn't know I'm doing okay. this now. Um, she will see. I will show her. Yeah. But yeah, she's very. Um, she helped me to push me a bit. Okay. Up, uh, with okay. My art, so I want to paint her. So it's both the same person. Uh, it's the same person, but uh, I will change them. Okay. Yeah. You change them. Yeah. Anyway. I will. I will anyway. change them. Okay. They will not be the same. And are yes. there gonna be more colors, or uh, I mean, what is um, what is the finished? piece going to look like mm. from now on yeah from now on it's i think there will not be a lot of change um, um I w in this idea of in this artwork i didn't want to put too much colors mm. i want to keep it quite dark actually and um and just give importance at the end to the color through okay. the darkness okay mm? yeah, like, yeah i know full contrast and um so there won't be very different type of colors. There would okay. be the warm, darker, yellow yeah. ochre, I would say, uh, combined to this very cold, uh, bluish gray that will come in the end. Mm. Uh, here it's still a mystery, what color will mm. come. This is okay. something where I see so many in my head, but I'm still, um, this would come in the end because I need to see the relation between the hat and this, mm. if it will work. So. Okay. Yes, but in the end it will be quite dark. Everything. Yeah. It's like a kind of, this one is quite like a kind of a tunnel, I yeah. would say also. So you're using the dark color only for, to, 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 to bring the, the real colors out. I mean, you're using the, uh, the, the black to show the colors even more, or is there a deeper or, or, or a further concept to, to the black? Because 
most of the other works are very colorful and you don't see almost don't see black in it mm. or or plain white mm. there's always some color in it yes. and black and white are not really colors in a sense mm. but um w why do you choose to use so much black, black in this in this yes this because painting? um i wanted to because i love black yeah even if i paint a lot of colors i love black um, because that it has all the colors in it yeah. and um and in this one i i wanted to um, to make something very black because um because the other one was always filled with colors and yeah. and i wanted to show that even if i use black it will still be colorful yeah so yes yeah so yeah it's a <laughs> <laughs> yes no, so i think this time i wanted to do something a bit deep uh, deep like yeah. in the yes in a more obscure way mm. but not bad okay yeah. beautiful mm. very nice <laughs> Thank yes. you very much for this introduction into your into your uh, uh, works, into Thank your you. life, mm -hmm. into your being, mm -hmm. to your past and your family's life, some, some things. And um, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very much for having us. Yes. And um, I wish you all the best in your future. And hopefully you can still continue to be a full-time artist and uh, you'll make a living out of that. Too. I hope. Yeah. <laughs>